What's up, y'all? Rambler here. Just wanted to get on here real quick. Kind of uh, talk about my my dancing life, um, how it started, because um, I was a professional uh, dancer for a good 20 years of my life. Um, I never um, did work in, like, big studios or anything, you know, big productions or for, uh, you know, music videos or anything like that. I worked uh, at strip clubs um, exclusively um, because I didn't have any education. I dropped out of school when I was in the eighth grade. So I have no education um, as far as, you know, all that dance. I just came from the heart. But it was like a fluke getting into the dancing world for me. Because um, especially back then, you're a, I'm male, right? Obviously, I'm a dude. So who wants male dancers? It's, still, it's mainly female dancers, right? You go to main towns, like when I grew up in Spokane up until I was 14, you didn't have strip clubs for dudes. I don't know if they have them now, but I doubt it. Um, it's in very select places. Um, South Florida, Portland. I don't know if they still have them, but I know they used to because I used to work there um, downtown. Uh, this, they have. They used to have one right across the street from each other, two strip clubs. And uh, then you have Cape Cod, which is up north, like uh, up by New York, right? Then you have uh, Fort Lauderdale, which is right below Miami, which you can also dance there, both of those places. And then you have the Keys, which is down as far as you can go. <laughs> it's very, it's kind of scary to get there because you got to go on this one road. But well, anyways, there's very few, uh, Las Vegas, I've also worked there. Um, you can, and these are male clubs, uh, working at, at, at uh, four male. Now I've, I've worked at both. Um, I've worked at gay clubs and I've worked at straight clubs. Um, and I only worked at the straight club for one night and that was, I'm cool with that. Uh, females are extremely, uh, excitable and scream a lot and don't pay a lot. Men, on the other hand, different story. <laughs> so much rather dance for men. Now I'm a straight dude and you can, you know, take that for what it's worth. I don't really give two shits about anything else besides that. I know who I am. I'm a straight dude. I'm, I'm not gay or nothing like that, but, um, I have experimented and I, I know myself, um, but it's not something that, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not having sex with anybody. Like I've, I've been a monk for the last, uh, probably 10 years of my life, if not longer. So anyways, um, back to the, you know, me becoming a dancer is I went to South Florida because I was in trouble uh, with the law and I had probation because uh, I had got unauthorized use of motor vehicle. Meaning I was with a buddy after he stole a car and so they gave me unauthorized use. Now in every state but four states back then, um, it was a, a, a misdemeanor, okay? But in Texas, where I was at the time, uh, it's a, a fourth degree felony. And so basically what that means is they can take you for this misdemeanor, they turn it into a felony. And now they can put you in prison for six months minimum to two years with real criminals, okay? And, uh, you know, it's, it's a bullshit fucking law. And the reason being is because my dad escaped from prison for 12 years and uh, made, the, made them look like fools because whenever they finally caught him, they gave him time served. It's another story. If you ever want to know about it, ask me. I'll, you know, tell you all about it. My father's a bit of a legend. Um, so anyways, I get in trouble in Texas. And so I go to Florida. So I'm like, fuck this. I can't do no probation. And, and they're just going to throw me back in jail. So fuck, come get me, motherfucker. So I go and, uh, and um, when I'm there, I'm with my I go to my uncle's and he's a fucking douchebag. He's no longer with us. God rest his soul. 
he's, he's human, but during his life, he's a bit of a douchebag. And uh, he promised me one thing, and, and you know, when I got there, he's like, oh, well. And he, they let me live and rent a room from them, right? And I got a job right away, roofing, because that's what I did back then when I, when I was coming up uh, young, when I was younger. And uh, so I'm roofing at this company under the table, and every time I get a paycheck every week, I pay rent to this to my uncle and his aunt well his aunt freaks out on me every single she does a lot of drugs a lot of alcohol and so by sunday she wants more money from me and i'm like listen lady i need to save my money so i can get the hell out of here i can't be giving you no more money i already gave you money I gave you money on friday when i got paid so then she proceeded to try to kick me out of her house when i paid rent already How, you know what i'm saying like i have no rights like she's just this you know, I won't give her more money. So she literally kicked me out. And back then, you know, I wasn't hype on renter's rights kind of thing. I didn't want to, you know, I could have just called the cops and said, this lady's crazy. And she's trying to kick me out after, after I already paid rent. So I, but I didn't know nothing like that. And, uh, you know, I'm young, 19 years old. And, uh, so I go out on the lawn and I, and <laughs> basically I'm not leaving. You know, that's what I told them. Um, I'm not leaving. I'm going to go to work in the morning. I'm going to sleep on the lawn. So they ended up every week. They did this for like three weeks in a row. and Or she did this. And um, she'd like wake me up at like four o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Every single Sunday. It'd be so so basically she'd party, party, party all Friday and Saturday night. And then run out of money on in that Saturday. And then wake me up and demand money from me. And I wouldn't give it. She'd freak out on me and kick me out of the house. I'm not joking. It happened three weeks in a row. So the fourth week it happened, all right, because I didn't leave. They they ended up, you know, saying, oh, come back in. And, and she calmed down and stuff after she stopped having her fucking rage from not having drugs, right? So um, the fourth time it happened, my uncle just packed me up at 4 o'clock in the morning. He didn't, they didn't say nothing to me. They just packed me up, took me downtown uh, to, uh, after I already paid rent, by the way, you know what I'm saying? Like I gave them hundreds of dollars, but they, they basically took that hundreds of dollars and they put it into a hotel room, um, down on, uh, uh, in Fort Lauderdale. Right. And this back then, these hotel rooms are no longer there. They're now torn down. Um, they were old school, man. They were torn. They were made in the seventies. And so they were, you know, like roach motels basically. Um, and it was, it was actually a chill place. They had like a pool at this one that I went to, um, had a pool in the middle. So it was, you know, the rooms weren't great and they were done in the seventies, but it was, you know, it was nice. And so, um, and I had it all to myself. So he brought me down there and my job was right by his fucking house, which was over an hour drive away. But that's just driving. That's not like the bus. The bus is going to take you like twice as long as driving, right? So, and my, my, uh, job is, is roofing, which means they get started like 7 a.m. They don't, you know, it gets hot. You don't want to be up on a roof as, as much as you can when it's real hot. So you want to start real early. And, uh, so the first night that, um, that's, that's the Sunday that that happens. So the next day I get up early and I try to get to work and I get there, but I'm an hour late. I'm there at eight o'clock and they left at seven. So I'm like, fuck man, I can't. And that's the first bus I could get, right? It was 6 a.m. It took it two hours to get me there. So I'm like, fuck, man. And I ain't got hardly any money on me. I'm expecting to go to work and get uh, paid again and, you know, you know, all that stuff. So I go to my uncle's house, but I don't go to his house. I go to his neighbor and I, the, he loans me like 10 bucks or something like that. And uh, he gives me $10 or whatever. And I go back to the hotel room. I get on the bus and I go back to the hotel room. Well, the next day I wake up and I'm trying to fucking, um, I'm trying to, uh, get, you know, an earlier bus, right? So I'm up about, it's, it's five now. And so I'm, I walk out, it's pitch black, it's all dark. And, um, I'm walking out to go to the, to find a bus to get to work, man. Cause I got to get to work, right? That's all I knew back then, right? Uh, I didn't know nothing. I just, you know, I wanted to work. And um, so I, I, I'm out there going to the bus stop. And this one dude, his name is James. His name was, I think he's no longer with us. God rest his soul. Uh, he may be still around. 
if it's a good chance he's not. His name's James Spack, okay? He was a glorified car salesman, meaning he was a really good car salesman. He made a lot of money. And he would, they basically nicknamed him Poodle Jim because he was a guy that always had this standard-sized poodle with him. So Poodle Jim. Well, he's leaving uh, that morning to go pick up his uh, boyfriend and his uh, their stuff. So what he does, this guy, James Spack, is he will take a crappy hotel place like the one I'm living at. And he'll take the biggest room that they have and he will redo the whole thing. He'll do the floors and the paint and, the, you know, he'll do the whole thing, make it all look really nice. And he'll do it for the owner just, just to do it. Like, he'll just, he'll want to live there, and he'll live there as long as he wants, um, but he'll pay like, like normal, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, that's what he does, it's, it's kind of neat, uh, it's kind of eccentric kind of person. Anyway, so I'm walking out, and he's walking out, and we, ironically, are coming out at the same time, and he's like, hey, what's going on? And this guy, by the way, has been basically watching me for the last 24 hours that I've been there, right? But he hasn't said anything to me. And it, it, people would like follow me around and stuff like that. Like there's a nice beach. It's it's a beautiful place to, to be. Uh, it's like paradise. And, uh, you know, I so I, I noticed him because I, I had seen him a few times. But he never said nothing to me. So um, this particular morning, he's like, hey, what's up? Where are you going? And I'm like, I'm trying to get to work. And he goes, I'll take you. And I'm like, really? I'm like, oh, that's so awesome, right? Hooks me up, takes me to work. During the drive, it's an hour drive, mind you. So he's got a lot of time to ask me questions, okay? And back then, I'm a young 19-year-old kid, okay? I mean, I've been on the street since I was 10 years old, right? So I'm not a dumb person. I'm very street smart. But I'm, I'm you know, I'm a young kid. And so he's asking me all these questions. What do I like? What do I don't like? And stuff like that. And he's like, um, what time you get off work? And so I'm like, get off work at this time. He's like, whatever time you get off work, just call me and I'll come pick you up. And I'm like, sweet, that's perfect, right? So I go to work and I work all day. And then um, I get off work and um, the boss pays me because, see, they paid on Monday for a bonus. It's it's hard to explain, but they paid Monday for a bonus if we worked cert like it's hard to explain, but anyways, so Monday, they, they didn't think I was coming back to work. They're like, cause I missed the day before. Right. And they're like, you were a no show yesterday. Where were you? And I was like, I tried to tell them I couldn't get to work and blah, blah, blah. But they were, you know how people are They're They're used to people's bullshit and drug addicts and, and, you know, liars and stuff. So they didn't believe me. And he's like, made me promise. Like I'm coming to work the next day. He's like, made me shake his hand, this guy. And so I get off work and, um, the guy picks me up and he takes me out to dinner and I get chicken fried steak, which is one of my favorite meals, chicken fried steak. And, um, I'm eating and, and he, he, he bought an ounce of weed, right? And, uh, so I'm smoking and he's like, Hey, I got, I got a proposition for you. I'm like, what's up? So he goes, this is what I, 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 uh, when I seen you this morning, I was on my way to, he told me that what he was going to do. He's going to pick up his boyfriend and all of his stuff and bring it here. And he's in a big excursion. Okay. And, um, so he goes, Hey, I'll, what do you make in a week? Okay. How at my job? And so I embellished, of course, cause I didn't tell him what I really made. I was like, you know, I'm trying to <laughs> get as much out of this as I can just to be honest. And so I told him I made like, I think it was like a thousand seven hundred or a thousand dollars a week. And uh, he's like, um, I'll pay you that to drive with me to Virginia, pick up my boyfriend and all my stuff and bring it back here. And I'm like, I thought about it and I was like, yeah, man, that's, you know, that's fuck. How can I turn that down? So, um, we, uh, after that, after the meal, we just headed out. Right. And, um, we just headed to Virginia. So about four hours, five hours into the drive, he got really tired because he had had a long day. He didn't know what he was going to do, right? He's been up since five o'clock in the morning. And um, so about midnight when he's, he's driving, he gets, he just gets really tired. He goes, he goes, I, I got to get some, I got to get some sleep. And uh, so we pulled uh, into this hotel room and you, you got to understand he's never met me, 
okay? <laughs> I could have, and he had probably about $13,000 in cash. I'm not kidding, because he was like paying for stuff and he was pulling his wallet out and he was open with it, you know what I'm saying? And so, with, not with everybody, but you know, he showed me, like it was like showing off or whatever. Um, so I knew he had a lot of fucking money and he had keys to a brand new excursion and we went to the hotel room and he just passed out. He just passed clean out. And so, um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I looked around and I'm tired. I worked all day and I'm like, yeah, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a bad person. I'm, I've never been. You know, I see that I can get more out of the situation by being a good person rather than a bad person. So in it, I ended up um, just going to bed and waking up. And the next morning, I gained a reputation because he had contacted all of his people and told them. And since then, that's how I became a dancer because one person led to another and people just kept being nice to me and giving me stuff all the time. And then that's how I became a dancer. Peace out.